we're going to have a look at the F ratio. And this is a really important figure when we're analysing and looking at the data we get when we perform an ANOVA. Now, this data helps determine whether the differences between group means are significant. I'm going to go through an example from sports rehabilitation, just to put it more in a context for you. So using an example from sports rehabilitation, now you're comparing how effective three different rehabilitation programs are for athletes recovering from an ACL injury. Now each group of athletes follow a different rehabilitation program. So you've got program A, program B and program C. And after eight weeks, you measure their knee strength. Now, looking at MS between groups, now this measures the variance in knee strength between the three different rehabilitation programs. If one program is significantly more effective, this value will be larger. So the MS within groups, this measures the variance in knee strength within each group, which is due to random factors or individual differences among the athletes rather than the rehabilitation program. So then we have the F ratio calculation. Now, if the F ratio is high, for example, 5.8, it suggests that the differences in knee strength between the programs are larger than what would be expected by chance, indicating a significant effect of uh, the rehabilitation programs. Now, the F ratio helps to determine whether the variance between groups due to the independent variable or treatment effect is significantly greater than the variance within groups due to random error. A high F ratio indicates that the differences between groups are likely due to the independent variable, while a low um, F ratio suggests that any differences may be due to random chance. Now, this number is essential for interpreting the um, results of an ANOVA and making in informed decisions based on data analysis.